Well, if you watch crime shows on TV, you see how detectives put the pieces together using everything from surveillance video to fingerprints and DNA. But tonight, an unconventional process being used to help solve crimes. Here's our Grace White with the Pollen Profiler. Chilling murder cases, missing kids, chasing terrorists, unwrapping a crime scene takes determination. Inside a forensics lab at Texas A&M, an unlikely detective with a sense of humor. I like to play, I'm, I'm uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes. And for almost half a century, Dr. Von Bryant's been profiling pollen. So how do you use pollen to solve cold cases? Essentially what we try to do is pinpoint where things come from or where people have been. When most of us think about pollen, we think of trees, plants, and allergies. But it doesn't stop there. It travels indoors, too, on our clothes, making it almost like a fingerprint investigators can pick up from a crime scene. Under a microscope, the pollen grains point back to a specific part of the world where they're from. And in one case, it led investigators back to Boston and helped solve the disappearance of a little girl. In 2015, investigators found her dumped in a garbage bag in the Boston Harbor. Dr. Bryant mentors Andrew Lawrence, the only other forensic paleontologist in the U.S. who he trained. Lawrence pinpointed pollen on the girl's clothes to an area near the Arnold Arboretum at Harvard University. Sure enough, the suspect, the mother's ex-boyfriend, lived within walking distance. Recently, a jury handed down a conviction. I love it because I love to say I told you so. And this is a man who's been dedicated to one specific topic, one subject, one specialty for like 50 years. That's why he's the best. This student may be a little biased. The only person I can find who's willing to do this is my granddaughter, and I'm very proud of her. Now, she's a student at A&M, training to fill his shoes, and they're pretty big. After 9-11, the government called him to help track down terrorists. As they were trying to find bin Laden and members of al-Qaeda. And so, yes, I did know that that was the primary goal. Bryant looked at everything from shoelaces, backpacks, even pollen samples collected from cell phones and bombs. But the sad reality now... Most of the police departments here don't even know about it. Pollen is not admissible in court like it is in other countries. This looks like a pretty good one right here. And with the rise in DNA, Brian often finds himself defending the golden dust most people still overlook on a crime scene. I still think it's going to be important for a number of years. I think it's a good career to get into. There's so few people in it. You don't have much competition. Brian is still teaching classes at Texas A&M in the Department of Anthropology. He often tells his students Mother Nature has a way of solving life's questions if only we put in the time and effort to figure it all out. Me and Lynn, back well, to you. It's fascinating. He's been doing it a long time. Be nice if they could get it admitted in court. It would, mm -hmm. it would help his cause in terms of presenting the evidence. Absolutely. He's hoping to train more people that can carry on all his work. All right. Fascinating side of forensic science. Thanks so much, Grace right. Watt.